What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy, Scooter, back in another video. So, Cyberstar Maxis is coming out in about two weeks. We previously did a video about cards that you should pick up for this set, but now that we've had some more spoilers today, as well as a 10 case tournament that happened online with over 100 players, we kind of have a good idea of the cards and the decks that are going to be good. So I wanted to create a quick video talking about some tech choices and cards that you guys should definitely be picking up if you don't have already because they're pretty cheap right now and I think if the meta unravels like the way that it should then some of these cards might be highly playable in the meta game. So without further ado let's quickly dive in. At the top of the list I actually have Cosmic Cyclone. So this card has been obviously in a lot of players side decks but I think it's going to be especially good in the coming format because a lot of the decks sort of revolve around continuous spells, field spells, or pendulum scales activating in the zone and cosmic cyclone is really really good as a disruption going first against these cards as well as going second so you can pick apart some cards that stay on the field and are kind of a nuisance for your deck to deal with you know we're talking about cards like my friend purely so this is a continuous spell that allows them to reveal three purely cards from their deck and add one to their hand which is really annoying so we can deal with that right away if we're going second we want to get this off the table because if it's on the table and a fear face up purely xyz monster leaves the field because of your card then they get to add back three quick play spell cards from their graveyard to their hand, which is essentially like a plus infinite. So if we're going second, we still have the Cosmic Cyclone, we can kind of deal with that and then use something else like a Kaiju to get over the X purely Noir and then continue playing. So they're not gonna go plus a bajillion. And then if we don't kill them that turn, they're just gonna be able to mount a comeback on the following turn. Also deals with some other annoying things like Stray Purely Street, which is a field spell card when this is on the field. It's kind of annoying to deal with Purely's because you can't target them if they spe special summon them out on that turn. If they use like the trap card to summon X Purely Noir on your turn, you can't target it with card effects. And then the other thing is if you get rid of the XYZ monster on your turn, then they're able to special summon one level one purely from their deck or their graveyard, which is equally as bad because you're amassing advantage to still getting cards. So we can still deal with that. I suspect that Cash Tier will still be decently good. I know that we're getting a ban list in probably like three to four weeks time, give or take. But there's still cards like Cash Tier Birth that'll likely remain at three. And if the OCG is any indication of how the ban list will go for Cash Tier, then we're probably going to see like Fanrir and Unicorn go to one as well as a field spell, which we can hit in addition to Birth with Cosmic Cyclone. So I just think it's a good enough disruption that we can definitely uh, count Cosmic Cyclone in for a card that could be on the radar. And then there are also cards that were swelled today for the Gold Pride. So we had Gold Pride. There's a continuous spell that allows them to add any Gold Pride from their deck to their hand and then lose life points equal to its attack. And then in the end phase, they get to draw a card when um, a monster is shuffled back to their extra deck with the effect of the Gold Pride card. So we can just deal with that with Cosmic Cyclone as well, going first as an interruption. And then, of course, everyone's favorite Super Heavy Samurai Prodigy Wakeushi. This is the one card combo that Super Heavy Samurai uses to put up like a five negate board and go full, full, full combo. But this activates in the pendulum scale as a spell card. So we can chain the effect of Cosmic Cyclone and take care of that really fast. Just get rid of that card. Obviously, Cosmic Cyclone is not going to be super good going second against them because of the fact that they likely don't play any spell or trap cards. But there may actually be continuous spell cards that they may play, which we're going to cover after this card. And that card is actually Prohibition. So this is a card I think you guys should pick up. And I think it's very, very good in Super Heavy Samurai because of the fact that it's a continuous spell card. Super Heavy Samurai is kind of involved you not having any spell or trap cards in your graveyard, which of course continuous spell cards will remain on your field. So you don't have to uh, be bothered by that restriction. And this is especially good because you can call Plethora of Hand Traps, the first and foremost being Drone Lockbird. This is the one card that essentially stops Super Heavy Samurai in its tracks. The other Hand Traps don't really do as much because you're still going to be able to play through so much because the deck is just so absurdly powerful. You have everything at three. You have Super Heavy Samurai Soul Piercer, which is not a once per turn Sangin, so you can continuously search. So having Prohibition to call Drone Lockbird, the card that you'll likely lose to going first playing Super Heavy Samurai, is absolutely crazy, as well as being able to call other cards as well if you know you're playing against like a branded deck or something and you think you can play through a draw with your hand maybe you can just call branded fusion and then they're locked out of the game right which is where cosmic cyclone might also come in clutch if you're going second against super heavy samurai you can just deal with that prohibition and prohibition is really really cheap right now there are a lot of printing so it's like a dollar or two for the commons obviously the super rare from this champion pack is a little expensive around 70 or 60 dollars but you can also pick up the secret rare version which i think is under 10 dollars right now so definitely pick these up if you guys haven't already i I think it's a super super good tech choice in super heavy samurai speaking of cards that don't allow your opponent to play 
This is another one of my favorites, Cyblocker. And I have to give a quick shout out to Anthony Aircroft for suggesting this. I did kind of think about it, but I, the more I thought about it, it's like the deck doesn't really need your normal summon. So yeah, obviously you're gonna be normal summoning the Soul Piercer at times to start your combos by going into Link 1. But Cyblocker is just a generically good normal summon in a super heavy Samurai deck because a lot of your extenders don't involve your normal summons, things like Wakaushi and then being able to Pendulum Summon as well. So it's not like it's the end of the world. Even if you have to normal summon Soul Piercer, you can still Pendulum Summon Cyblocker out and then call something that's significant in the matchup. So if you know your opponent is playing Kashira, maybe you can call Birth or Unicorn. If you know your opponent is playing uh, branded, you can call Branded Fusion. If your opponent is playing Super Heavy Samurai, maybe at the end of your combo, you could just call Wakushi, and then your opponent cannot use that effect. The nice thing about this card is that it's marginally better than Prohibition because it actually negates, well, it doesn't negate, but it turns off the effects of continuous cards on the field as well, whereas Prohibition only do cards that are not already on the field. So if your opponent has something like a Fossil Dina or a Vanity's Fiend, we can just normal summon a Cyblocker, call that monster's name, and it turns off the effect so we can continue to special summon and continue to play so it's really nice that you have this option of playing offensively by calling cards that you don't want your opponent to use and prevent that and also turn off cards that are giving you uh, an issue in the metagame so a lot of decks are using one card starters nowadays so if you know what the matchup is you can already preemptively call something and then prevent them from playing which can be very very powerful in the right matchup and then speaking of monster floodgates vanity's fiend this is actually uh, pretty cheap card on TCG Player right now because there's so many printings. If you want to get the ultimate rare, it's a little more expensive, probably in the $30, $40 range for an unlimited or for the reprint ulti. But the first editions, I think, are a little higher. They're like $60, $70. But this is very, very popular in purely because of the fact that you can normal summon this card um, over top of a purely monster because you don't really use your normal summon. You could also play it in Super Heavy Samurai if you don't use your normal summon. Summon this, and if they don't have any outs, then they have to kind of deal with it, which is why I really like Cyblocker. And Cyblocker is only like a $10 secret rare card. It's only gotten one reprint in the battle pack, I believe, which is a couple of cents. But if you guys really... Uh, capitalize on this right now. Go on TCG Player, spend $10 each, buy a playset for $30. Anytime this card has been playable historically in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! In the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's always been uh, skyrocketed in price because again, it's from Star Strike Blast. So this is a pack that was very um, rare, very short printed. A lot of cards didn't get reprinted for like eternity. So like cards always, always go high. Like Skullmeister went up to like $50, $60. I could see this card go up to $40, $50 if it starts seeing play and becomes popular. So definitely for the price of $10, you can get a card that's eternally good throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! formats because any deck that does not rely on normal summon can make use of this card, especially now that more and more decks are using like one card starters, one card engines to fulfill their entire combo. I just think it's a very, very versatile card. And then another monster floodgate is Majesty's Fiend. In the same vein as Vanity's Fiend, we're turning off monster effects. I don't know which one's better right now. I think Vanity's Fiend's a little better because you can turn off special summons, which these new decks rely on. And also it turns off things like Cash Tiro, obviously being able to swing over the Majesty's Fiend. But maybe Majesty's Fiend could have some niche usage. It turns off, you know, things like hand traps. It turns off uh, the purely of monster effects from being able to search. So it could have some marginal utility in addition to Vanity's Fiend. They're under $10 right now. I think it's a good time to pick up six careers this could eventually be good again decks that don't need a normal summon like super heavy samurai will eventually like they could anytime they could make use of this card depending on the meta so eventually they're going to adapt to the meta game and then potentially play cards like this or cards like spell cancer this is another floodgate monster that i was thinking of spell cards are negated so if you can stick this then your opponent can't really do anything and i believe it's also searchable off of cleaford genius because of the fact that when you pendulum summon a monster um, to this monster's zones, then you can actually add one level five or higher machine monster from your deck to your hand, which is really, really useful given that Spell Canceler is all of a sudden searchable in your deck. It's a machine level five monster, so that's pretty cool. You can search it out, and then if you haven't used your normal summon yet, you can tribute summon to summon Spell Canceler, and then Purely probably has a hard time dealing with this. Decks like Castira even have like a hard time dealing with this if you have an answer to uh, their Unicorn and or Fenrir. And even in the mirror match, in the Super Heavy Samurai mirror match, it might be decently good because they can't play spell cards like Wakaushi, so it turns off that pendulum um, play that they have to start. So they're going to rely on things like normal summoning and also their other extenders from hand, which you can easily deal with because a lot of times those are tit for tat. They're not getting like insane advantage like you would off one Wakaushi. And then speaking of 
and traps, actually, which we should to totally mention. Uh, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. This is one that was seeing a little bit of play in that past 10 case tournament. It's really, really versatile. It deals with a lot of things. First and foremost, you can deal with my friend purely. Uh, this is really, really powerful because purely don't really have a lot of choke points, but they do have consistency issues. If they don't have the quick play spell card that they want, then a lot of times it's hard for them to start their plays. So we can deal with that by hitting the my friend purely, getting it off of the table so we don't have to deal with it on our turn either. And then it also hits things like even the field spell if they're trying to special summon from their deck. It hits things like cast care of birth, assuming a rise heart's not on the table because Ghost Ogre has to send to the graveyard for a cost. And then it obviously hits the uh, certain cards in Gold Pride. Like, yeah, it, it hits the end phase draw effect of the continuous spell so it's not like the best but you're still getting some utility out of it you're able to hit some of the monsters as well if they're playing like the zeomans you can hit that so they're not able to go into their uh rank three xyz plays immediately being able to hit waka Ushi is very very powerful as well so this has a lot of dual utility a lot of crossover between the decks that are going to be relevant in the meta game so i think it's definitely something you guys should pick up and it's fairly cheap right now for the hollow printings we're seeing like a couple of dollars because it's been massively reprinted it's been reprinted recently in magnificent mavens if i'm not mistaken so definitely pick up some right now. The ultis are already starting to trend up. They're like 150 bucks previously. I think they're around 160-ish now, but if you guys can pick up a playset and you're not on a budget, then definitely do that. Other card is Retaliating C. I think this card is very, very nice as well against purely decks if your deck can afford to play it. Because when your opponent activates a spell card that includes the fact that special summons a monster, which is all of the quick play purely spell cards, you can special summon this card from your hand and it instantly puts the field to Macrocosmos board state. It starts banishing everything. Purely have a hard time dealing with that when you start banishing their spell cards because purely Lily is unable to target cards in the graveyard and then go into their XYZ plays for free. So it's very, very nice interaction there. And then you get a level four body that you can link off or XYZ and further your plays on your turn because it's kind of hard for them to deal with. They're going to have to somehow go neg into X purely noir and then do they really want to detach two cards and potentially lose the protection effect to get rid of a retaliating C body, right? So little things there. The holo printings are only a dollar or two. You can pick the super rare copies off of the OTS packs or the ultra rare that was, uh, I don't know what it was reprinted in, but it's kind of nice to have. So if you guys don't have any copies right now, definitely pick them up. They're like a dollar or two. They're really, really cheap. It's always going to be a good card, especially in a metagame with spell cards that special summon. And you can also be used, um, I believe, against the gold pride card as well, which is kind of nice because this card um, does include the effect of special summoning a gold pride monster from the hand. And the nice thing is when this card is actually sent to the graveyard, you can also search for Contact C, which is decently good against some of the decks as well. Against Purely, they're going to have to link off Contact C with one of their names into an IP Mascarina, which I assume they play. We haven't had this Sky Striker Azalea been spoiled in this pack yet. So if it's not in this pack, then they're losing like a critical piece of their link engine, which most OCG Purely decks actually do play because of the fact that you can destroy any card on the field. But if they don't have that, then they're going to have to go into something like IP Masquerina, which is a little worse than uh, Azalea, in my opinion. But obviously, it depends on what their hand is, how many extenders they have. Last card that I want to talk to you guys about is Triple Tactics Talent. Okay, we talked about Thrust in the previous video. That card was floating around $55, $60. It's already gone up to $65, $70-ish on TCG players, slowly trickling up. The other card that I think people are forgetting about is Triple Tactics Talent. This is often played in the three of in the purely deck. It's very, very powerful because in this metagame, I think there are a lot of cards that are going to be activating in your main phase. So we have things like X Purely Noir. We have a lot of hand traps. Super Heavy Samurai are a monster mash deck because they can't play spell or trap cards for the most part. They're going to be playing a lot of cards like Droll Knockbird, Nibiru, you know, Valor, a lot of hand traps. A lot of people are also main decking Droll Knockbird. So this is really nice that you can look at their hand, rip out a card so they're down to three cards. Or you can steal a monster in the grindy board state. And I think that this card is actually fairly cheap right now. It's reprinted in Magnificent Mavens. It's about $15. If you guys... Um, Pick this up if you don't have it already because it's definitely going to trend up if it starts seeing play in the metagame. And I suspect it will. This card is absolutely insane. I was playing it in my cashier deck and it's always been like MVP at the YCS 250th. It was super MVP. Just having three options to do anything. And the fact that this upcoming metagame is going to have a lot of Omni Negates, a lot of hand traps flying around. A lot of things are going to be activating in your main phase. So it's almost always going to be live. And I think as soon as it sees more play as a two or three of in the main deck as a non-engine staple going forward, then it's definitely going to go up in price. So guys, if you don't have this card, definitely pick up a play set while it's still cheap or otherwise it's going to go up to 25 30 maybe even higher like we saw it before and that's about it for this video i'm going to try and make some more as the metagame evolves as we get more spoilers in this set 
the TCG exclusives, the OCG exclusives. We're gonna learn more and more about how the metagame is gonna shape up to be. And maybe there are gonna be other cards that you guys should definitely pick up. So don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and also comment below if you guys have any suggestions on other cards that you should pick up for the deck. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.